Hey folks, we are here at the Tour de France, the individual time trial stage. Got riders warming up right back there, and I'm gonna dive through all the sports technology here. Things like trainers and power meters and anything else I think that's kind of interesting. Of course, we are located just outside of Dijon in like the most scenic possible venue in the vineyards. And the team's trucks, team vans, team buses are all lined up right here with all the gear and all their extra bikes just out front. And here's the cool part. There is some unannounced sports tech stuff out there. Some new trainers, a new trainer that was not announced at Eurobike. Right now, every single team bus has laundry machines. These are actually the fanciest laundry machines out of all the ones out there that I've seen. They've got the bikes they're riding on, which are time trial bikes today, as well as spare bikes and some road bikes. There's a bit of a climb in today's route, so we may see some guys swap bikes between their time trial bike and the road bike. We'll have to see how that works out once uh, the stage gets going here. You can see their backup bikes here have the numbers up top there of the different riders. My guess here is these are just purely for backup and not for swapping. Uh, I don't think the stage really lends itself that well, especially since the main portion of the hill is on the front half in the first couple kilometers but you will probably know better than I because you can actually see the race and I'd have to go up into the hills over there and follow along. Now just a quick note this video is sponsored by the Pros Closet a little bit more about them later on. So the way this works back here the way the whole stage works for an individual time trial stage is the riders go off at basically set intervals of every like one to two minutes give or take uh, from pretty much one o'clock till five o'clock. The stage length is about 20 or so kilometers uh, it's got one kind of climb in it the rest of it is sort of rolling downhill it's not a very difficult time trial stage in the grand scheme of things. The start order for the stage is based on the rider's current placement. So essentially the person in the yellow jersey is going to go last today and the person that is last place is going to go first today. You'll see a start list posted to every single team bus. They'll typically tell them what time their rider's meal time is, followed by what time their warm-up starts, followed by what time the car needs to get going down to the start line, and we're going to follow that entire process, and then which car, which support vehicle, all that stuff is covered on that list there, so the entire team is on the same page, literally. Now you see one of the riders on Team Intermarche there. Uh, they've got a cooling vest on, they're under a tent, and they've got the Elite Area fans, because they're sponsored by Elite, uh, keeping it cool. But that that is not the swankiest setup we're going to see here. We're going to find a couple more that are definitely up in the game a bit. Now, the way the paddock works is basically this fence here. Uh, and so on the outside is where kind of the public area where fans can be, and on the inside is where any credential media can be. But there are some fans that are allowed behind the Team Intermarché bus. <laughs> I, I could not do it. You're welcome. Now sprinkled around the paddock here are these different banners. Uh, they indicate who has the team jerseys at the current moment of time. So in this case, the KOM jersey. And if we go in here and look what they got from a trainer standpoint, they have a custom tax Neo 3M in the polka dot. So one of the things to know about Uno X is that they are a tax sponsor team. And so tax has done for many, many years where they have these trainers that one of their PR people basically has in the trunk of their car. And they go to every single stage and they move the trainer around depending on which team needs it. So if they lose the jersey it goes to a different team and so on they have one for the yellow jersey polka dot green white and so on we'll try to find a few more of them out there they've also got Vacmaster fans which is cool it's the exact same fan that i use as well at home it's a really cheap fan it wasn't really designed for indoor training but the companies kind of leaned into it once they found out people were using them because it's great for that purpose it's also worthwhile noting at uno x that they have each individual tax trainer labeled with the cassette speed type on the back now, keeping in mind, that doesn't actually matter a ton in erg mode. So if they're just doing a structured workout, it won't matter all that much. But I thought it was interesting to have it basically in a whiteout marker on each of those trainers. Again, it's all the little like professional details that you do with the Tour de France because you have things at scale and at speed and all that kind of stuff that you don't have time to mess around and get the wrong one. And now, hey, a quick note, if you are finding this video useful or interesting or funny or informative or something like that, just go ahead and give it a like down at the bottom there. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, if you look carefully here, you will see the air conditioning vents portable air conditioners there inside the massage table uh, but what's notable here is that they're not riding in that in fact last year they had most of the riders up in these team kind of mechanic vehicles and they closed them off they air conditioned them and the riders are inside of that uh, i'm seeing no riders at all do that this year thus far though it's not a super hot day and even in the case of FJ, they're still riding outside they've got the trainer set up back there they're not currently inside this air conditioned booth that's just for massages uh, likely afterwards you can see the team mechanics vehicle right up there. Uh, tons and tons and tons of wheels and extra frames and all that kind of goodness. Got to keep in mind they have basically a couple bikes for each rider plus their time trial bike as well. They don't typically have too many extra spare time trial bikes. They have a couple spares of course, but uh, not enough for every single rider. Since those time trial bikes will only get used twice in this year's Tour de France, sometimes it's just once. Now the reason I went outside the paddock on the other side of the uh, fence, if you will, is because there's two teams that I couldn't see very well, oddly enough, from the internal technical zone. So I had to swing outside to get those and we're coming up on those now now for those of you who are playing the long game here on being subscribers i'm happy to report that team Lidl trek 
does indeed have the pineapples back again. It's part of the fruit basket. Okay. They replenish that fruit basket at every stage nearby, and uh, there are pineapples back in business here. So you can see Team Appleson already packing up everything. They're, they're done. All the riders have gone, and it's only 2.45, which isn't necessarily the best scenario. That means you've got nobody basically in the front half of the race, give or take. Now we just came around the back side of the bus, they're finishing packing up, and they had all of the kickers individually slotted. So the actual trainers themselves aren't in the big bulky boxes because they have made their own little covers. And I was talking to the mechanic and he mentioned that all three of the buses have it that way. Now, if you look at the front of almost every single one of these cars, you're gonna see an iPad and the iPad is running Veloviewer. You may know Veloviewer from like a cyclist standpoint on Strava and stuff like that, but all the teams use it as well to serve they pay for uh, and on that iPad basically shows their exact current position. It shows all these things that are coming up, whether it be sharp turns or uh, steep hills or anything that's notable on that course. The folks at Velreview have basically gone through that ahead of time for all these routes and the teams can then add other notable things as well to it. And of course it's used by not just the men's teams but the women's teams and across all sorts of races. It's like one of the few de facto standard like sports technology things that's used out there today uh, across all pro cycling. Of course as many washers and dryers as there are here, the reality is the dryer part basically basically sucks. So just hanging them out like that is just a whole lot easier. Now, Decathlon's bus, as they're warming up, there's something notable. You would think that was just an Elite Doretto XR, but in reality, it is more than that. If you look closely, there's a sticker there that says Elite Doretto XR Team. So I was like, what's the team? Is that just like a sticker they stuck on for fun? No, 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 it's more than just a sticker. That's actually a special edition trainer that's not coming out quite yet, sometime later on this summer, just at Decathlon. And more than just a sticker, it actually has different software on it. Uh, so it's got race mode on it, so basically the higher speed data rate mode on it. It has a new DI2 mode on it, allow you to use your DI2 shifters to control erg mode, and then it has a new standalone mode. So it's interesting to see that kind of shown here as opposed to at your bike with at least the Elite Justo 2 as well as the Avanti. Speaking of the Justo 2, we've seen that at a couple teams. There is a new Elite Avanti, just announced two days ago at Eurobike. Uh, that trainer is basically a 799 trainer designed to compete with something like the Wild Kicker Core. So of course, notable to see it for the first time outside of the convention halls. So one of the UAE team mechanics doing an entire crank set swap right now. They're doing it as fast as they can. Like the whole thing, they've got the Shimano power meter connected uh, to a power bank. So my guess is there's some problem there where they're out of battery, but uh, either way, they're swapping out the entire thing right now. It's pretty impressive how fast they're moving. I can't quite see whose bike it is. It's usually listed on the other side, but uh, I'm gonna walk around the other side here and see whose bike that is that they're uh, urgently swapping things out on. Okay, so I was finding out whose bike it was. Uh, notably, I checked out those road bikes there and they've got little shells basically for what I presume are Wahoo Rome 2s. They're a two Wahoo sponsored team, but it's like a aero shell for it. It clearly looks 3D printed. It's for the road bikes and not for the TT bikes. The TT bikes have a whole different setup on the aero bars. While the company stages may no longer be, it is living on in the pro peloton right there on one of the spare bikes. I'll look up the number later on for you and put it on the screen whose bike that is. Uh, but kind of surprised to see that here. I can't tell. It is indeed a dual sided one. So it's a dual sided one on top of the Shimano crank set. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this video is sponsored by the Pros Closet. Of course, the kicker about the Pros Closet is they started off basically buying gear from pros and having pro mechanics validated before you get to buy it. But the interesting part is that these days you can sell your own gear to them for either cash or a store credit. And there's even a new consignment feature where you can basically let them go ahead and have it and you'll get paid more if it sells sooner. Uh, and if it doesn't sell at the end of 120 days, then you still get paid for whatever you agreed upon at the very beginning. But the neat part in terms about buying gear from the pros cost is that everything's already in stock and already validated and ready to go. So they have their mass mechanics basically go through the bikes when you send your bike in, or if you don't send it in, someone else sends it in. Uh, and they swap out any parts that need swapping, they tune it up, they make it absolutely perfect and then they put it in a box. At that point, when you're shopping on a site and you see a bike that you like, there's no delay. The bike's already stocked up like you see right here in these piles of boxes, ready to get a UPS label to your house. But of course, that's not the only thing the Pros Closet sells. They also sell frames as well as bike computers, trainers, watches, all the stuff that I'm seeing out here is pretty much there and all the stuff that I review is pretty much there as well. So check out the Pros Closet. And if you use my link down in the description there as well as the coupon code in the screen right there, you'll save 40 bucks off your first order of $200 or more. Thanks again to the Pros Concept for sponsoring this video. Okay, so you can see one of the Team Jayco riders back there, right there, warming up. Uh, notably, he has a cooling vest on. We've seen most of the riders warming up with cooling vests. I'd say probably maybe 50% of the riders today warming up with cooling vest. It's not a super hot day, not a super hot stage. So compared to some of the time trial stages last year where every single rider uh, was not only using cooling vests and cooling fans with misting systems and even some of them inside the trucks as I mentioned earlier on, this year it just seems a little more relaxed because it isn't a very long stage and it's again not very hot out. Still it's a careful balance between warming up the legs and the aerobic side of it but not overheating the body which is what they're trying to do there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow one of the riders down now uh, through the entire shoot and I'm gonna explain how it all works until the starting line. 
So we're basically just gonna grab the next rider that pops out of here. I'm gonna follow him through because there's a lot of interesting steps here. Okay, so those one of the Team Mobistar riders going through right now. Uh, his team van or team vehicle just went up ahead of them. So we're gonna catch up. And I'm gonna walk you through this entire process because it's super fascinating. One of the Uno X riders as well. Um, so here are all the team vehicles that are getting ready to go into the queue, into the start queue. So there's the Movistar rider, Ineos rider, team education first over there. Keep on going forward up here. Intermarche. And there's the Intermarche rider. Now, on the left hand side here are a bunch of the different basically race vehicles of sorts. So these are the official vehicles, but mostly they are sponsor basically vehicles. These are vehicles that are going to take people for a ride. You can see some of the people up there. Um, so they get to follow along behind of it. They're essentially partner vehicles of sorts, and there's a whole bunch of them. And usually there's one or two that's going to follow behind each one of the different racers uh, for various partners. And of course, it's just random VIPs that are going to go along in these cars. That's in addition to a lot of the team vehicles will have one special guest in there. So here comes the Uno X team right now, uh, team vehicle. And you see the guys off the side of there, they've got the name plates already ready to go. They're gonna snap it in the front. There we go, just put it on top there. And if you look on this side, you can see they've got all the nameplates organized by rider time. And these mounts here are simply just suction mounts that snap on the front of the car. There you go, you can see it pop it in place there. They have the next one ready there and so on all the way down the list based on the start order right there. Now, once these guys have it on, they're gonna go ahead and keep on going. You can see the lineup, if you will, of cars behind it. Uh, so Movie Star behind that and Education First and so on. And then if we go far enough back here, be on this pile and we see the Shimano Neutral vehicle back there. Uh, and then again, some of those special race vehicles there as well. We also see mechanics that sometimes will pull bikes up to the front that weren't quite ready yet before. Okay, here comes one of the Team Jayco riders in. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and hand off his bikes to the Team Mechanics. There's a lot of Team Mechanics around here. Probably hang around a little bit nervously. And then off to the left-hand side is the UCI. So the UCI is basically double checking all the different specs for the bike to ensure there's nothing that uh, is illegal in terms of measurements and fit, et cetera. You can see the guys measuring it right there. We got laser measures on all that pieces. That's the Team Ineos bike there in front. We're going through that. So here goes the Jayco bike up there right now. You can see the measurements on that clear seat there, measuring the saddle, uh, measuring various frame components in terms of heights and things like that to make sure they're per the spec. There's a lot of different UCI specs in terms of what is allowed and not allowed. So going through all that right now. You can see they're scanning in the bike as well. All the bikes are inventoried. Every single bike has to be inventoried like from motor standpoint. Uh, so you can see one, two, three, four, I'm counting like somewhere around the neighborhood of five UCI officials plus two Shimano folks as well that are seen to be helping here uh, for all these measurements. Everything going into that iPad. And in just a second, they're gonna hand it back off to the team mechanics. There we go. Team mechanic then takes that right now. They got an Edge 130 on there. Pretty popular for the time trial. If you see that a number of years on the time trial stages. Do one quick wipe. And then you can see there's trainers set up over here. In this case, there's an elite trainer, there's a tax trainer, there's a Wahoo trainer, another tax trainer behind that. I had to continue the warm up before they go right on to the starting corral that's just up there to the right, that yellow bit. That is a starting corral there. Uh, so you can see he's got his real bike here, the bike that he's actually going to race. And then he's got basically a warm up, the spare bike over there. So he'll be the next guy to go after the guy that's in the gate right this second. His team car is over there waiting for him. Okay, and there he goes, he swapped his bike out. And at that point, of course, you go on TV and you watch the race and see what happens. I, I can't show you beyond that there. I can just show you stuff in here. There's another Edge 130 right there. Again, pretty much the norm. And we have a couple war sets down here as well, by the way, in case folks don't want to deal with the messiness of a trainer taking things off uh, and on. The mechanics don't want to deal with that. The rollers are ready to go right there. So a couple more sports tech things to clean up here. Uh, number one is power meters. A lot of people will ask why you do not see power meter pedals at the Tour de France. And there are actually some here. There are some look pedals here. I couldn't find them on the bikes because mostly those are on road bikes as opposed to their TT bikes and most of the road bikes aren't out today, but there's a few teams that are using those on the down low. The vast majority of the teams are on Shimano power meters because they're sponsored by Shimano for the drivetrain. Um, of course, all those same teams complain 
quite a bit actually to Shimano about the inaccuracies of the Shimano power meter being universally the most inaccurate power meter uh, here at the tour or really for sale at all for that matter. Um, and then beyond that you've got SRAM's power meters uh, based on Quark which is here as well for about a quarter of the teams, about a third of the teams this year. Again it's all about sponsorships for that kind of stuff so uh, don't overthink that. Obviously we have the least accurate power meter on the most bikes and at the end of the day one could argue probably correctly that these riders are going to win regardless of which power meter they're on. But last year saw all three Grand Tours one on SRAM and not Shimano, uh, the first notable year that's happened. Now, when it comes to trainers, again, they're all sponsors. So in this case, it's basically three core sponsors. You've got Tax, Elite, and Wahoo uh, sponsoring them, mostly split up between Tax and Elite with a couple teams on Wahoo. For things like bike computers, hey, we got the washing machines rolling right now. Washing machine time. Um, now, for things like bike computers, it's really hard to spot at a stage like this. As you saw just back there, there's a lot of riders throwing down the Edge 130s, the tiny little ones there, uh, for which Garmin still isn't replaced in years, but they're only doing so for this stage. The rest of the stages are going to be on Edge uh, 840s or 1040s or maybe in a 1050 out there, uh, but you have to be at a main road stage as opposed to a time trial stage to see that. So stay tuned for that probably down the road a little bit. Okay, we got quite the crowd around here right now with Bogacha warming up. Uh, he's basically probably, I'm going to guess, about 15 minutes into his warm-up. I uh, had to swoop around again to see the exact timing sheet. But uh, he goes off at 5 o'clock, yellow jersey, one of the last rider to go off for the day. Uh, so i got about half an hour until that happens. Okay, so at this point, he is off the bike, and he's now gone ahead inside. Okay, so we came back out again with the Aero helmet on at this point. He's actually putting chalk on his hands. He uh, requested it in there. It's pretty interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Can you use to do some high cadence drills on and off here? Okay, just ask for a little bit more chalk. So 11 minutes until start time, uh, he's getting off. At this point, they're gonna swap out onto his rear disc wheel. And then it's the whole process that we just walked through a second ago, uh, going down there. Go, Puggy! Off he goes. I simply can't keep up with them because they're kind of a ways from the start at this point. So the team mechanics, they're giving uh, one of his bottles out to one of the fans. And thus, there you go. That is a Tour de France time trial stage in a nutshell. All the craziness of that. Wait, I got one more thing for you. Uh, a bunch of crap. No, literally, the team buses are pulling up there after the stage. Uh, and there is a crap truck right there. That truck basically just letting them empty out their tanks. Uh, so you can see the truck there, they hook it up and then they empty out the tanks so that, again, it's all about efficiency at the Tour de France. So with that little bit of extra tidbit, you should definitely hit like because where else do you get crap tidbits except for, for here? Have a good one. So with that, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. There's a bunch of other Tour de France videos over here you can check out for more behind the scenes goodness. Have a good one.